So I'm, I started uh, currently, beginning of this year, my postdoc at the Reagan Institute, working with Douglas Kwon on HIV and uh, HIV uh, at the gastrointestinal tract, and we're also interested in HIV, TB in the lung. But the data I'm presenting are from my PhD, which I obtained at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in London, uh, together with uh, Ulrich Scheible as my supervisor. In my first lecture at university, when I heard about TB, um, it seemed to be that TB enters uh, macrophages and it survives in macrophages because it blocks the phagosomal maturation and then is able to survive and proliferate in these phagosomes. And later on in my studies, I learned that there's much more about TB than just living in these cells. They might also live extracellular, they might form biofilms, they might have capsules, and so it, it got uh, really complex. And there's one cell type which I think was neglected for a while, and these are neutrophils in TB. And there are two papers I would like to point out which describe a bit uh, that TB might, uh, that neutrophils might play a big role uh, in this disease. And this is this one which came out, I think, in 2009 or 10 which showed that if you look in the lavage of patients with active TB, the main cell population infected um, are actually neutrophils and not macrophages. And also if you look at the um, signature, the transcription of signature in patients with active disease, um, there's a signature driven by, uh, also by neutrophils and uh, interferon. So there seems to be a role of neutrophils uh, in TB and in the process of an active disease. Um, when we further looked into literature and just wanted, wanted to find out what is the actual interaction between the bacteria and the cells, it seemed to be very controversial. So if you only, if you only ask the question in literature, can neutrophils kill the bacteria in vitro, and you look just on human cells, um, you find as many papers suggesting that they, yes, they can kill the bacteria as many papers showing no, they can't. So just looking on this question, it seems to be very controversial and also looking at other aspects of neutrophils. So therefore, we thought we study the interaction of neutrophils um, and TB in vitro using neutrophils from, uh, isolated from healthy donors from the peripheral blood uh, by uh, density gradient centrifugation, which gave us a purity of about uh, 98 to 99 percent, and then studied them in, in vitro cultures by infecting them or not with uh, bacteria. Um, the first thing, and this is uh, um, in line with other publications, is that uh, neutrophils can uh, take the bacteria up, and this was, we shown this by electron microscopy, but we also shown this in other assays. And one thing which we found is that if you pre-incubate the bacteria with uh, fresh human me um, serum, you increase um, the uptake by neutrophils uh, quite dramatically. So these are opsonized uh, bacteria just 30 minutes before I um, incubate them with the neutrophils. And this is presumably due to a complement, because if I heat and activate the serum, I, I lose uh, almost uh, the entire infect. Um, so from this data, we were sure that uh, neutrophils can phagocytose uh, bacteria, as you would find from macrophages. Uh, the next thing we investigated was if the cells get activated. and um, in neutrophils, you can look at different markers. One is the release of IL-8, which is stored in granules and just released after minutes, um, which also happened uh, when we incubated the cells with MTB. Then in the um, migration assay, we have seen by just um, giving them, uh, putting them together with bacteria, they, mi they migrate towards um, um, the bacteria, like they would migrate uh, to an IL-8 gradient. Um, so they seem to be attracted just by the, the bacteria themselves. 
And another marker for activation of neutrophils is the loss of CD62L on the surface. So if you incubate them with uh, E. coli, you get a dramatic uh, drop of CD62L on the surface. And oh, the legend is missing. This is the uh, TB line. So if you incubate with TB, the same thing happens. Uh, you, loss, uh, you lose CD62L on the surface, which is a sign for activation of the cells. Uh, we also looked on rust production by using DHR123, which um, becomes fluorescent if it's in contact with radicooxin species. Um, so E. coli is again a control where you see a shift in fluorescence of DHR123. Uh, the same happened with Smegmatis, um, but also with uh, TB. So, so we, from this data, we were convinced that neutrophils take up the cell, um, take up the bacteria and also get activated. So antibacterial um, mechanism gets activated in these cells, this, which would lead us to the same question like, as I said before, if neutrophils can uh, kill them. And we did this by CFU, but I didn't see any killing in my essays. So um, these are just bacteria uh, in medium, and these are bacteria incubated with uh, neutrophils. If I pre-activated the cells with interferon gamma or TNF alpha, I didn't see a difference in survival of the bacteria. Uh, however, my assays seem to have worked because I noticed killing of uh, E. coli in my assays, and I also noticed killing of smegmatis in these assays. So, at least from this uh, data, I know that the bacteria get taken up and the cells get activated, so antibacterial mechanisms are present. And I can only say that my assays and the cells seem to be functional in general, but um, the um, TB strain doesn't seem to, um, to get killed. So, uh, so therefore, we ask ourselves why the bacteria would survive in the presence of neutrophils. And what we found is that we have a dramatic increase of uh, cell deaths in these cell cultures. So this is uh, done by fax using annexin 5 and a dead cell stain marker. And uh, incubating the cells with uh, MTB, there was an increase, a high proportion of cells which were not only annexin 5 positive, but also positive for the dead cell stain marker, which didn't happen in our uninfected controls or uh, cells incubated with smegmatis. Uh, I further use the LDH assay, so detecting um, enzyme activity in the supernatant, which is a correlate for cell deaths. And here again, it was uh, only the MTB strain, which gave over time rise to LDH activity in the supernatant, suggesting that these um, cells uh, die really early in this uh, assays. Also, if you look just by microscopy, this is an HE stain, uninfected cells. Um, over time, um, when you infect them with TB, you find the cell shadows lying around that suggest disruption of um, the cells. And if you just use a DARPI stain, you find this uh, extracellular DNA um, lying around. So these cells are not really in shape anymore. They're totally disrupted, which explains uh, the previous uh, results from the assays we had. Um, so, I mean, one possibility for, for this would be that our assay time is just too long. So, because they have, these cells have a lifetime of approximately eight hours in vitro. So you have to be really quick with your assay. So one explanation could have been that, you, that these cells are just start to die in your assay. And then after a while, you have something called secondary necrosis because the cells just fall into pieces. But we don't think this happens in our assays because at the same time we see LDH activity with uh, MTB infected cells. Uh, we don't see any activity in uninfected or when we increase the um, number of apoptotic cells with anti-CD95. Uh, this also seemed to be not dependent on caspases because when I added uh, caspase inhibitors to these cultures, we still got the same a percentage of LDH activity in these assays. So another possibility for neutrophils is that uh, radicooxin species uh, are involved in, uh, the, in cell deaths. So therefore, I 
uh, started a collaboration with the hospital in London where they had a cohort of um, CCD patients which have a non-functional NADPH oxidase and therefore can't produce any radical oxygen species. And uh, interestingly, we found that so this is a control donor where you can see again the increase of LDH activity over time. But when I used neutrophils from CCD donors, I didn't see this uh, LDH activity anymore in my assays, suggesting that these uh, cells uh, seem to survive and do not go into these uh, cell deaths. And downstream of the NADPH oxidase, we have another enzyme involved in radical oxygen species production neutrophils, which is myeloperoxidase. Um, which uses hydrogen peroxide produced by NADPH oxidase and catalyzes this into other radical oxygen species products. And using an inhibitor for this enzyme, I had a similar effect that um, the LDH activity was uh, dramatically diminished when I used the inhibitor for this enzyme. So suggesting that also downstream of the NADPH oxidase activity of other enzymes are involved in this uh, early cell death. So I thought now where I inhibited um, as the early cell death, I might be able to see bacterial killing by these cells. So because we thought the reason why they can't kill the bacteria is because they have this, uh, they go into this early cell death. Uh, however, I didn't find any uh, reduction of bacterial survival uh, using neutrophils from the CCD donors, but also not when I use the inhibitor for the myeloperoxidase. Um, this was a bit disappointing because I was hoping at this point that I might have um, solved um, the question why I can't see any killing. Thanks. Um, but we, so we thought there must be then a virulence factor by uh, coming from TB, which uh, is uh, involved in, in the survival. If, and we went uh, back to the paper from uh, Peter Peters, where, they, where he showed that uh, in macrophages, in human macrophages, uh, MTB can translocate into the cytosol by disruption of the phagosomal membrane. So we used um, as and this was dependent on um, RD1. So we used this mutant in our, our LDH assay, and, there was, and this mutant was not able anymore to, inc um, to induce this uh, early um, cell death like the wild type that did. And you also could see this by microscopy. The wild type showed again the um, cell shadows and the cell disruption, whereas the mutant didn't show this anymore. And also the mutant was uh, susceptible to neutrophil killing, showing here by CFU. Interestingly, this killing was totally dependent on ROS production because, again, neutrophils from um, CCD donors were not able to decrease survival of uh, even the mutant. So this uh, brings us to a model we suggest that where attenuated strains or non-virulent strains um, are taken up by neutrophils. And uh, due to ROS production, um, these bacteria um, can be killed in the phagosome. Whereas the virulent strain is also taken up, you also get ROS production in these phagosomes. But due to RD1, there's probably disruption of the phagosome and membrane. And this is uh, going to lead to leakage of these radical pro products into the cytosol and this uh, might cause this early cell death we have seen in our assays. And so it's known in, uh, for patients with acute TB that you have um, these necrotic lesions and this massive influx of neutrophils. And so we believe um, that this early cell death is this mechanism and, and these neutrophils really contribute to the pathology in these um, patients. And, and therefore, also another suggestion would here to, to inhibit this by using um, inhibitors of neutrophilic inflammation rather than general inflammation to, to stop um, this pathology uh, driven by neutrophils. Okay, um, at the end, I only would like to uh, thank my supervisor, Ulrich Scheible, and the LSHTM team also Susie Hingley Wilson gave us the bacteria, and Johann Bülon is a neutrophil expert. I was visiting a couple of times, 
and the Royal Free Hospital um, gave us the neutrophils from the CGD donors. Thank you. We have time for only one very quick question for Bjorn. Um, hi. I actually had um, two, but I'll try to squeeze it in. The one is that I, um, I do something similar looking for death and life of bacteria and macrophages. And my CFU, I always have a flat line. Not always, but most of the time, have some kind of flat line like you do. And by looking at subpopulations of macrophages, there's actually a dynamics between restrictive macrophages that are killing and permissive macrophages that are not. So you might have something like that as well. And my second question was, um, oh, so I, I was going to ask if you've looked at single cell dynamics. And the second question was, in your microscopy assay, did you at all correlate bacterial burden with your necrosis? Corre so and could you see a difference, like increasing bacterial burden? Uh, there was some burden threshold, some carrying capacity of, of the number of bacteria that are inside your neutrophil and whether or not that leads to oh, necrosis. You, you mean the number of bacteria per one cell? Right. Or, uh, no, I don't, I'm not even convinced that I need a bacteria inside the cell to have um, this sort of necrosis because sometimes I've seen cells uh, very disrupted um, where I wasn't sure if they got actually infected. Another thing I realized in this essay is that these neutrophils, once they got infected, they start to build big clumps and aggregates, so, so almost like an early granuloma formation or something. I don't know exactly how this happens, but I see massive clumps of cells coming together. And, and these clumps seem to be the first ones where the cells uh, actually start to die. So, so there might be factors um, apart from the bacteria itself, which, which leads to cell deaths. Okay, let's thank our speaker. Thank you.